I was born in Rochester, New York in 1934. We have three children, two girls and a boy. My son, Eddie, is at Xerox. Um, my daughter, Kathleen, works at Roberts Wesleyan College, and my daughter, Karen, manages Old Navy and Webster. I was in the service, uh, United States Army, uh, station in uh, Kentucky for a while, then I shipped over to Germany. I was in the heavy equipment, I was in the tanks. Did uh, multiple things, I drove, I was a gunner. It was, it was good, I had, a, I had a good time in Germany. I, I saw countries I would have never seen. Mm -hmm. I was discharged in October of 1956. Well, when I got discharged from the service, my brother was uh, president of the union at Fowler's uh, Manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, go to, he had a, set up an appointment for me at, uh, I went, so I remember the overhead cranes, noise, guys welding, I said, this is not for me. Actually, I'll tell you, when I went, when I went to that interview at Fowler's, I, that, that scared me. The factory scared me. You know, yeah, I, I whoa, wait a minute, yeah, I, there, there was so much noise. So my brother Frank called me, who was the president of the union, and says, well, what happened? He says, I said, well, I don't think that's for me. I said, he says, well, who the heck are you? What's good for me and it's good for your brother, it's not good enough for you? <laughs> that was my brother Frank, you know. He says, well, what are you going to do? I says, well, you know, I think I'm going to go to barber school. So then I had to investigate getting funds, and I got that through the government, the yeah. GI Bill. I went to school in Schenectady, New York, barber school. And we used to leave Rochester like 5.30 in the morning, get to Schenectady on a Monday, and go to, go to the school, which was in a building on the main drag, and, uh, and that's what we did. Then we would leave Friday and come back home. Oh. And we did that for six months. Uh, a friend of mine, Al, uh, Charlie Camera, who, who still cuts my hair, you know, we went to barber school together, mm -hmm. three of us. Well, then I finished school. Then I, now I had, I had to get into my apprenticeship. And I worked with a friend of mine, Joe, for a year. And uh, he had taken over a shop from Joe Esposito, who was a county legislator at one time, a wonderful man. And he took the shop back. Now I had to get a job. At that time, we had a union, a barber union. Mm -hmm. And they found a job for me on Joseph Avenue <laughs> for the Chipola brothers. So I was pretty good with the scissors. And, and I, I apprenticed for two years. Two years? Yeah, that I had a, at that time, you, you had to have so many hours, so much time. And I, I got that. And I ended up taking my, uh, my boards downtown. Mm -hmm. I took my board, I passed my boards. So I got my license, yeah. And I worked a little bit, a little bit longer for them. Then I had an opportunity to, to purchase the business on Thurston. And so I was new to the, you know, to the 19th Ward at that time, obviously. It was my first year here. And I think they built up my, my trade, you know. And uh, I, did, I did fairly well. But, uh, but my wife was very instrumental in helping raise the family. Not only the children, but financially. She always had a part-time job, you know. And I had a wonderful mother-in-law who took care of the kids. Business was, was okay, you know. Mm -hmm. Never charged enough, I still don't. <laughs> so, so uh, because of the union, when we had the union here in the city, uh, to raise haircuts, we used to have to have a meeting. Oh, okay. You know, with all the barbers. And uh, it, we raised that maybe haircut a quarter, mm -hmm. you know. Then we got cited by the federal government for price fixing, you know. Oh. So, it, <laughs> so they said, you can't do that, you know. You can't do it all at one time. So everybody went on their own, but like the closing dates, like Monday, most of the shops closed on Monday. Mm -hmm. you know, at one time, we used to close on Wednesdays. 
So we went to Mondays because it gave you Sunday and Monday off, yeah. you know. Yes, so that still kept the way it was, but now you can charge as much as you want, you know. You can let people in at 9 o'clock if you want to, you know. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do that before. But I did fine. I made a lot of nice relationships, you know. You know? That's what this business is about, you know. <laughs> now you're going to ask, do I have any interesting customers? They're all interesting. Yep. They all have a story. You know, and then my wife will verify. I come home, I'll tell her stuff about what somebody told me, you know, and, and we're like a priest, they confess to us. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I do I like it. I like the guys, you know. Obviously, I don't have the business I used to have, you know. I had an automobile accident on Brooks Avenue years ago and I hurt my left arm. And I was out of work for about seven, seven weeks Ooh. and uh, I had a compound fracture. And uh, and he, uh, Chris was so good. He was an old timer, and the shop was cleaned every night. He documented how much he took in. If he sold a comb, he would mark it down. You know. When I did come back to work, they said, "What are you coming back for? We like the guy better than you." <laughs> <laughs> and, and he was good. When the long hair came in, oh yeah, yes. oh, yeah. Uh, I didn't have that. And these were blue collar workers, you know. They just didn't do that, they, you know. Not then. No, no, not that it was bad. Yeah. The kids did it, you know. Yeah. And uh, they just got very conservative haircuts. They were sideburns, they wanted to shave around the ears. Mm -hmm. That's what they wanted, you know. Mm -hmm. They started to change. They started cutting their hair off now. Mm -hmm. You see it occasionally, you know. You do see, you know, but not like it was, mm -hmm. you know. But now if you look around, you see the police to have tight haircuts, right? Yeah, yeah, it's tight on the sides, mm -hmm. you know, it's military. Military. Yeah. yeah. Not a lot of them, some of them live at Gates. I have someone who comes here from uh, Hilton. I have someone who comes here from uh, Fairport, mm -hmm. you know. They, they still come to me, you know. I work uh, Tuesday and Wednesdays uh, full time. 8.30 to 4, depending, 4.30. Somebody comes in at 4, I take them. I'm old school, you know. At one time, it was uh, Hunt's Hardware. Uh, they were the oldest business. Louis Sweet Shop. Him and Vi, they, they started making uh, chocolate uh, you know, months, well, maybe maybe not months ahead of time, oh, but man. pretty, pretty. Oh, uh, God, yeah. uh, and they, they'd wrap them, you know, and they'd store them. And they worked hard. They were hard-working people. And he says, is uh, Louis still there? He says, yeah. He says, ah, he probably won't remember me. I says, uh, well, don't be surprised. I says, because he was visiting his mother. So I will stop in. So he stopped in to see Louis. Louis knew who he was. He says, you're so-and-so. Well, from visiting his mother, he came back and he stopped in his shop. He says, you're right, he did remember me. Oh, my gosh. Incredible. So I was like, maybe like number four, you know, uh, longevity. Longevity. Well, now I'm number, I'm number two, I think. <laughs> because Louis left. Mr. Hunt, who owned Hunt Harder, he's gone. So his son took over. So, so I, I probably... The second oldest proprietor on the street mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Mr. Merrill's, they gutted Mr. Merrill's store. Oh, Mr. Merrill was, uh, <laughs> you know, I keep saying they're, they're, they're wonderful people. They were. Yeah. Everybody on the street was nice. They were, we, I don't know, we just got along. Everybody was, mm -hmm. everybody had, did their thing. Mr. Merrill, he had anything you needed in his place of business. Yeah. Candy out of the bins, you know, you so much a pound, you know. It, it, I mean, everything. I mean, he sold multiple things. And if he, if you went there, you asked if he'd go in the basement, he'd find it. <laughs> Mr. Merrill. Yeah, he, Mr. Merrill was a nice person. His wife was worked with him. Just, uh, just a great guy, you know. They were nice people. They were a nice street. And they put a restaurant in there, you know. and. Uh, they did fairly well. They, they was, it was a good place to eat. They had an excellent cook. So over a period of time, it's turned into different uh, restaurants. I believe it's Oriental now. But the street has gone, uh, you've seen different, uh, 
businesses opening up and closing, you know. Yeah, I'm very honored that, you know, they, they recognize my longevity, you know, and uh, okay? my time here, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's, I, I know so many people, you know, who, you know. I have a book there from Good Counsel. I looked through that, and it, 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 it's, it's from 1928 to 1968. Wow. And I've, there's so many customers of mine in here who have passed on. I've had a couple that still come to me. Hell, yeah. the one is 97, and Jack is like 92 or 93. Jack, you know Jack Caulfield? Well, when the kids were little, he'd come home very late. I mean, he would work till six, and by the time he'd get home, so dinners were usually very late. Well, it, this is an unpredictable situation back then because uh, my hours were, sure. the union said you had, after six, you couldn't let anybody in. You'd have maybe two or three people waiting after six. Oh, really? Yeah. So there was, you know, there were times that I was here at seven o'clock, you know. But that's the way it was, you know. And she'd call and says, well, you know, how are you? I said, well, I got two waiting. I got one waiting. Whatever. <laughs> You're going to be the Grand, grand Marshal for the 19th Ward Square yeah. Parade. <laughs> well, I, I feel good about it. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that they recognize that I have been here that long, you know. And I'm the last one, you know, really, on the street. Oh, really? You know. And uh, so I've gone through a period where there were six, seven barbers on the street here at one time. Yeah, so they all passed on. I'm still alive. I'm still here. <laughs> so, so, so. I would like to thank the 19th Ward Association for acknowledging my 53 years as a business owner in the 19th Ward. I have many fond memories these years in my barber shop. I have met many wonderful people. Louis Sweet Shop, Hunts Hardware, Crawley Plumbing, all back 50 years ago. The 19th Ward is a great place to live. There's much history in this ward. <laughs>